Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So Griffith was not the only one who performed experiment to find out which was the genetic material. However, he was the first one to perform the experiment using the S strain and the R strain of the pneumococcus bacteria. However, there was another scientist termed Hershey and Chase. They performed their experiment using bacteriophages to find out the genetic material. So here we will see this experiment will again prove the same thing that it is the DNA which carries the genetic material, which contains the genetic material. So they experimented with bacteriophages. Now before we go ahead with the experiment, let me quickly remind you what are bacteriophages. The name sounds similar to bacteria, but they are not bacteria. Bacteria. Instead, they are viruses that infect a bacteria. So, as I said, now as I said, these are the viruses that infect bacteria and they also replicate inside bacteria. So, here the structure which you can see, this describes the structure of a bacteriophage. So, the structure broadly has three important parts as far as the structure of a bacteriophage is concerned. So let us quickly look at the important part. So here you have a protein coat covering. So this covering is made up of protein. So this is the protein coat. Inside this is the genetic material. So the DNA is present here. So this structure which you see, this is the DNA and this outer coat is the protein coat. And here you see some structures too at the bottom. So these are the tail. They are called as tail. Now what happens is, how does it infect a bacterium? Now it sits on a bacteria. It lands on the bacterium rather. It gets pinned there, fixes itself on, on the body of the bacterium. And then gradually this tail, it penetrates inside the bacterium. And that is how the information or this gets into the bacteria and then the replication happens. So now basically this is how it happens. Now once the genetic material reaches the inside the bacteria, the bacterial cell will start treating this genetic material as its own genetic material. However, it is the genetic material of this virus. Right? But since the bacteria will start treating it as its own genetic material, so it will start manufacturing more viral particles and that is how replication of this virus will take place inside the body of the bacteria. Now the question is what is being injected? As I said, it is the genetic material that is being injected. So what is that genetic material? Is it the protein that is getting injected or is it the DNA that is getting injected? Because in these case, these are the two options that can be injected inside the body of the bacteria. And whatever is getting injected, that particle has the genetic information. That is why it is able to produce more and more viruses. Right? So that is what we have to see here. So this is how a normal bacteriophage reacts when it comes in contact with a bacteria. So what it what was done in the Hershey Chase experiment was that some bacteriophages were grown in radioactive phosphorus medium. So it was grown in a medium which had radioactive phosphorus. Now phosphorus is an important constituent of the DNA. So if you look at the structure of the DNA, you will see that phosphorus, phosphate is present, right? Phosphate group is present in each nucleotide. So phosphorus is an important constituent. So if the bacteriophages are grown in radioactive phosphorus medium, so it is definite that the DNA will be radioactive. In those kind of bacteria, their DNA will be radioactive. But the protein will not be radioactive because protein does not contain phosphorus. So obviously there, this portion will be radioactive, but the outer protein coat will not be radioactive for these bacteriophages. So let us denote it like this. So the radioactive DNA is denoted in red color. So this denotes radioactive DNA. So now there was another set of bacteriophages which were grown in a medium with radioactive sulfur. Now sulfur is an important constituent of protein and sulfur is not present in DNA. Therefore these bacteriophages which were grown in radioactive sulfur medium, they will have radioactive 
protein. So here you can see the outer coat is all red because now the outer coat has is radioactive in nature. So the outer coat has radioactive protein. So please remember wherever you have red color that is the that is radioactive and the black color is all normal. So these two types of bacteriophages were first grown. One in radioactive sulfur so that it has radioactive protein and the other one in radioactive phosphorus so that it has radioactive DNA. And then what was done? So in first case the bacteriophages which were obtained with radioactive DNA, they were then brought in contact with bacteria. Now as soon as a bacteriophage comes in contact with the bacteria, the same process will happen. The tail will penetrate inside, so the bacteriophage will come in contact with the bacteria. So the bacteria will get infected. So what will happen? It will land. The bacteriophage will land. So three simple steps take place. Landing. The second step would be pinning. So landing, pinning and the third step would be penetration. These are the three steps by which a bacteriophage will infect the bacteria. So first it will land on the bacteria. So here it has landed. Now then it pins itself so it gets fixed on the surface of the bacteria and then its tail starts to penetrate inside. So that is how it will infect the bacteria. So what happens now? So now once it infects the bacteria, then inside the bacteria, the genetic material is present now. That because the genetic material has got transferred into the bacteria. So now these bacterial cells along with the genetic materials which have been passed on by the bacteriophage, this entire thing is then agitated in a blender. So that is taken in a blender. And centrifugation leaves the phage particles as supernatant. Now, how does this happen? Now, when centrifugation takes place, what happens? The particles with different densities, they get separated. So, the particles which have which are heavier, they tend to come nearer and the part or they tend to get settled down at the bottom and the lighter particles tend to come upwards. So, that is what happens in centrifugation. So, when this was passed on or this underwent centrifugation, it was found that the phage particles are present as supernatant. So it was observed that supernatant is the liquid which is present above the residue. So at the bottom was present this portion that is the bacterial cells and above were the phage particles. So this blue region which you see here, they were the phage particles which were present as the supernatant. So supernatant fluid is all the fluid except the residue which is present at the bottom. Now what happened as a result, what, what was then observed? So now what was the purpose of separating the phage particles and the bacterial cells? So why did we separate them? Now we separated them in order to see which of them is radioactive, whether the phage particles are radioactive or the bacterial cells are radioactive. Because once this bacteriophage has infected the bacteria, it has passed on the genetic material inside the bacteria. So now that genetic material can be either present in the uh, bacterial cells or it can be present in the phage particles, right? So. So in order to know or find out that it is important to separate the phage particles from the bacterial cells. Now what was the final result? The final result was that the radio bacterial cells were radioactive. So that means the radioactivity entered into the bacterial cells but no radioactivity was detected in the supernatin. So the phage particles, so the part, portion of this bacteriophage, they did not have any radioactivity in them. Now, in this case, what was radioactive? The DNA was radioactive. This proves that this DNA has been passed on to the bacterial cell because the DNA was radioactive which was present in the bacteriophage earlier. Now, the bacterial cells, that is the cells of these bacteria has the D radioactivity. That means the radioactive DNA has been passed on to the bacteria. So, this proves that DNA was passed on. Now let us try the same thing with the second set of bacteriophages with radioactive protein. What happens in this case? So we will repeat the similar experiment and what we will see is first the bacteria gets infected again it is agitated in a blender so that the 
Phage particles can be separated from the bacterial cells and again in centrifugation the, since the, both of them have different densities so they got, get separated and in this case it is observed that there is no radioactive bacterial cells but radioactivity is detected in the supernatant that means radioactivity is present in the bacteriophage but there is no radioactivity in the bacteria so that means in this case, the radioactivity is not passed on from the bacteriophage to the bacteria. So it has been not passed on. So in this case, what is not passed on? Radioactivity was with the protein. So that means the protein is not passed on from the bacteriophage to the bacteria. So the first experiment proved that radioactivity or DNA has been passed on from the bacteriophage to the bacteria. The second experiment proved that protein has not been passed on from the bacteriophage to the bacteria and we also know that once a bacteria gets infected what happens is that inside the bacteria due to the presence of that dna so now this is proof that dna is what that gets passed on from a bacteriophage to the bacteria now what do we see we see that inside the bacteria the bacteriophage replicates so more and more bacteriophages are produced that means the material that is being passed on has the genetic material that is why more and more replication take place so this also proved that it is the dna which is the genetic material so i hope you understood the whole purpose of the experiment what they did was they took bacteriophage because why they chose bacteriophage because it is such an instance where bacteriophage passes on its genetic material to the bacteria and that is why with the help of that genetic material bacteria replicates more and more viruses inside itself so the point here which was to be checked was that what is that which is getting passed from bacteriophage to bacteria for that purpose in one set of bacteriophage protein was made radioactive and in another set uh, the DNA was made radioactive and then we saw in which case the bacterial cells were radioactive and it was found that with DNA it was radioactive that means DNA has the genetic material. So the final conclusion of Hershey Chase experiment was that proteins never entered into bacteria it was always the DNA that entered the bacteria therefore DNA is the genetic material. So it was now that it was completely proved that G DNA is the genetic material. So first it was proved with Griffith's experiment and then again Hershey Chase experiment further proved the same thing. So now it was all known that DNA is the genetic Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.